the Church of Scientology is so afraid of. This, this is SPTV. Hello, guys. Welcome back to SPTV. This is a series that we're calling What is Scientology Afraid of? And we're talking about Debbie Cook. In this specific episode, we're going to inspect how ABC News was instrumental in laundering her image. So let's get into the segment right now. Scientology is now facing harsh new criticism from one of its own. A former high-ranking official, Deborah Cook, blasted the church leadership in a weekend email to thousands of current and former members. She targets Scientology's fundraising practices and calls on members to scale back on donations. ABC's Dan Harris is here with more. And Dan, the church officials are fighting back. Indeed they are. Good morning to you. The woman who sent this email blast was once one of Scientology's fiercest defenders. Now she has become a very public critic one that some say could especially be especially damaging to this very, very powerful church. Okay, you guys, and yet again, here we go with Dan Harris and how long he's been on the story and how much access he's had to the characters coming out of those hotels that he insists in calling a church. So we're pushing back on your false narrative, Dan, and we don't care if you tell us that the IRS said it was a church. It is a hotel. So shout out to you, IRS, for also being dishonest and not caring about what the facts are in the physical universe, not what your collusion and delusion is all about. So let's see what Dan is pitching in this segment to us. The Church of Scientology, known all over the world for its celebrity members like Tom Cruise, John Travolta, and Kirstie Alley. It's also known for its controversies, like when a spokesman walked out of an interview with ABC News, or when a BBC reporter lost it when confronting that same spokesman. Now, a new upheaval involving this woman, Debbie Cook, who was a high-ranking official for 17 years until she left the church staff in 2007. She was one of the most prominent members in the entire world. So yet again, you guys, here is the mainstream media pitching you all the dysfunction, but it's very highly curated dysfunction that they're pitching, right? They're talking about violence and these executives and Tommy Davis and the screaming and the walking out of interviews. So all the dysfunction is displayed the media has a front row seat access to these people displaying the dysfunction. And yet that does not at all make them wonder if these adults are this dysfunctional, what could a child, and they were hundreds, if not thousands, of underage kids under the care of these people let's get into what they say world it's virtually any scientologist who's been involved in it for very long has actually had face time with her as a very respected person days ago yes let's hear from marty rathbun pitching us who the very respected people are and since the media can't seem to investigate their way out of a paper bag, Debbie Cook is a co-conspirator with Marty Rathbun. So when she comes out, Marty, who has no intention in coming clean whatsoever as to his actual crimes, is just polishing his image grandstanding and positioning himself as a so-called whatever it is that he's calling himself. But now he's going to the media because he wants to get his little airtime going on to continue to make himself an important, relevant figure of a movement that is going nowhere except to line their own pockets, a.k.a. Debbie Cook's pockets are lined, a.k.a. Marty Rathbun's pockets are lined, a.k.a. the mainstream media's pockets are lined. And where are the children? 
where are the kids that these people were abusing? Well, I can guarantee you that the media doesn't even know who those kids are, but we do because we were there all together as kids and we know. So we know how many kids' pockets aren't lined as a result of systemic institutionalized abuse that ripped away their entire formative years so they could be enslaved doing the work of these two disgusting people, full-grown adults that have had the time to decompress, that have had the time to self-reflect if that was even a thing for them. But apparently they're too afraid to go to a therapist. Well, why would they be afraid to go to a therapist, guys? Because if Debbie Cook starts opening her heart to a therapist and really telling her what she was up to in those hotels, the therapist, as a mandated reporter, would have to send Debbie Cook straight to legal authorities. If Debbie Cook actually started to reconcile the amount of sadistic practices that she was charging and who was having, who she was inspecting and she was ordering to go service a public, go service that public, go service that public by minors. If she ever woke up to the facts, you guys, trust me, her therapist would have to send her to the legal authorities. Because it turns out that, yes, you can be a therapist, but yes, it's not your job to listen to self-admitted Class A felony, felonies perpetrated on children. The job of a therapist is not to sit there and listen to Class A felonies perpetrated on children. So let's keep that very well into perspective since Marty Rathbun, yet again, couldn't help himself but want to go up in front of the TV's ABC News, who's obsessed with him, to give his little pitch. Let's see what else they say. Debbie Cook sent an email to thousands of current and former church members in which she says she is still a completely dedicated believer in Scientology, which has produced stunning and miraculous results. And... There you go, Dan Harris, laundering the image of Debbie Cook by quoting her email while you're completely oblivious of what that email actually says. So that's your first mistake, to read an email of this woman and not have a shred of a clue of what's written in there. Well, you know what? You won't have that excuse anymore, Dan Harris, because we are breaking things down so that people like you and ABC News who wants to profit. And then also shout out to you, Disney, who owns ABC News. Disney, who literally makes money on kids, you guys, owns ABC News. Imagine being the executives at Disney who literally are in the business of children. Imagine you're that executive and you hear that there's all these kids coming forward trying to sound the alarm, blow the whistle as to what the hell is going on in those hotels. And then imagine being that Disney executive and saying, yeah, a war without guns is what we should label this. So yes, Disney, Disney's hands are full of blood. They're full of corrupt money in their hands from exploiting us for not wanting to tell the story that their little neighbor was running a horrible hotel out of Clearwater, Florida, and also their neighbor in California. So before anyone tries to make this a political issue, it's in the red states and it's in the blue states. It's a blue and red problem. Both parties have a ton of questions they need to be answering and soon. Because yes, Disney is involved, you guys. They're the ones that own ABC News. And come to find out, they're the ones that also own A&E. And guess who gave all manner of access to tell the story? 
Leah and Mike tried to push the boundaries as much as they could, but Disney and a &E's legal department had a lot of pushback on all the kids' stories. They sanitized what they could in order to, let's not say it like that, let's not put it like that, uh, God forbid they come after us and start suing us. ABC News, Disney, your large corporations, don't you have a ton of attorneys there that know what the hell they're doing? Apparently not. Apparently your legal departments are as useless as a lot of other departments that we're going to get into. But that the current president, David Miscavige, has accumulated more power within the church than the founder of the faith, L. Ron Hubbard. Thank you for making our point, Debbie Cook, in your email. And thank you, mainstream media, for yet again having your little David Miscavige obsession because that's all you care about, to discuss David Miscavige and how he's having a power trip and he was accumulating a ton of power. Well, guess who was accumulating a ton of power, you guys? Because as much as Debbie Cook wants to project and say David Miscavige was accumulating power, she's not telling you what kind of power she accumulated while she was running her hotel without oversight. She's not telling you how she was keeping the Clearwater police out of her hotel every single time there was crimes perpetrated, felonies perpetrated on minors that took place inside those hotel rooms. But you know what? Debbie Cook has no problem with that because she just is pissed that, you know, David was having more power than L. Ron <laughs> Who cares, Debbie Cook? Who cares about Elwood Hubbard? And who cares about you, honestly? Envision for any single successor, a charge former church official Marty Rathbun agrees with. He wanted to make checks and balances. He thought that's the way that Scientology would, would um, thrive in the future. Oh, Marty Rathbun. I mean, these guys really want to hang themselves with their own words, you guys. Imagine being Marty Rathbun and going to ABC News to talk about checks and balances. Because that's what really Marty Rathbun cared about when he was in that hotel for decades. Checks and balances. What kind of checks and balances were in place, Marty, when you locked me up on the first floor of the Coachman building inside a vault, a literal converted bank, you guys, Scientology didn't want to spend the money to take out the literal vault where they were keeping the money. So they decided that that vault was where they were going to interrogate kids. So that's where Marty Rathbun would take us to get interrogated in a bank vault locked up with this disgusting creep who comes to the corporate media who wouldn't who couldn't care any less, who loves to be in the business of laundering child abusers' images, and who couldn't be more effective because yet a decade later, not a shred of progress has been made to put a shred of guardrails and protections so that kids that are unsuspecting, that can defend themselves, that can consent to the level of depravities and sadistic tortures, that these two clowns are out there purporting that they're so good and so great. And Debbie Cook talking about the miraculous of the technology. No comment, Debbie Cook. If that's how you like it as an adult, that's on you. But yet again, we will advocate that no one under the age of 21 gets to go inside of your disgusting, depraved hotels. And anyone else who's over the age of 21 needs to be told very clearly what the hell's about to take place. Very clearly so they're not confused. If they want to continue on their journey to go wherever it is that that bridge takes them, make sure that that's clear. Revise your Monique Yingling contracts that you have for yourself to cover your you-know-what. 
and make sure that even the adults are in the know fully because some of them can still claim that they're very confused by the contracts and very confused by the fraudulent pitches that people like Marty Rathbun and Debbie Cook are all about. But um, Miscavige um, thwarted his best intentions. Cook's email also. <sighs> oh, Marty Rathbun, how stupid do you think we are? David Miscavige thwarted it, his good intentions. Have you not read the policies? I mean, you're a complete idiot, Marty Rathbun. That's what you're showing everybody. It's giving, I don't care. It's giving, I read all the policies, but L. Ron Hubbard is such a great genius and David Miscavige was getting in the way because he was, you know, ruining our little party and we were just having such great power trips when he wasn't around to what, to what, Marty? What were the good intentions of L. Ron Hubbard? I dare you to call up your little friend Dan Harris at ABC News and give him an interview, the interview of a lifetime. Pitch L. Ron Hubbard to Dan Harris again and tell him how L. Ron Hubbard had just great humanitarian intentions. The man that literally normalized for y'all to go enslave children is the man who you are out there blabbing your mouth about how he's such a great, good person. Also complains that the church is engaged in continuous fundraising from its members and spends too much on opulent buildings instead of promoting the faith. And yet again, you guys, shout out to Debbie Cook for being the good misdirector that she is. Because as you remember from her little email, Debbie Cook, from her 17 years of service, from her decades of service and involvement in this conspiracy, the only thing that this woman has self-awareness over is the buying of buildings, opulent buildings. Isn't that just such a big problem? We're buying opulent buildings. How dare anybody buy opulent buildings? Well, in case you didn't connect the dots, Debbie Cook, you needed the opulent buildings so that the idiots at Clearwater Police would be like, well, they wouldn't be trafficking kids in that opulent building, would they? It looks so nice. It looks so polished. We get fruit baskets from y'all all the time. You're so good. You're so nice. You're such great PR. And that is all it's taken for any police department across the entire United States to play dumb and be like, yeah, those hotels wouldn't be carrying out any mass institutionalized child trafficking at scale because look how pretty they look. Look how nice it is. Look how polished it all is. Your buildings are your camouflage. That's why you're getting away with all of this disgusting stuff. In a letter to ABC News, a lawyer for the church says, quote, she is an apostate. Apostates are known to be unreliable with respect to their former faiths. The letter also says Cook is, quote, not qualified to speak about church finances. Shout out to the idiots that are sending these ridiculous statements, you know, because here we have little Debbie Cook who did run this place, like she says, for a ton of time. So let's really dissect this little gold nugget that Scientology attorney sends. Quote, Debbie Cook, who you see pictured right on the right, is not qualified to speak about church finances as she never worked for drum roll as she never worked for the church of science as she never worked for the church of scientology international the mother church that controls finances so shout out to these attorneys you guys that all they need to do in order to you know gaslight the gullible media, the gullible corporate media who has no attorneys, who has no financial reporters, investigative reporters that can pull no strings, 
is letting a Scientology attorney get away with saying how Debbie Cook had no is in no position to talk about the church's finances. Attorney that put up this statement, because we don't know who it is, if it's Monique Yingling or one of your other corrupt attorneys. Let's push back on this statement since ABC News has no spine to push back. Debbie Cook was front and center on the finances of this hotel. She knew where every dollar was coming from. She made sure she got reports from her treasury department, which was staffed with a ton of miners too, mind you. But these miners knew that they needed to account for every last cent and dollar of what Debbie Cook was extracting from all of her hotel patrons that were there getting serviced by minors. So let's put that on the public record to push back against the corruption that we're seeing in plain light from Disney and from ABC News who are making money purporting they're a news segment while actually pulling no strings and while actually finding no facts but wanting the eyeballs on themselves so they can sell the little segments to whoever it is that pays to be in front of these people. Scientology International, which is the mother church that controls finances. The mother church. I mean, yet again, you guys, all these people need to say is mother church, this ecclesiastical, blah, blah, blah so that they can hide the racketeering conspiracy right in front of everyone's eyes. They think they're so clever, these attorneys. They think they know so much. So shout out to your legal law schools where you went because they obviously didn't teach you to make sure you just don't take your client's word at their word. You have to investigate for yourself, aka due diligence, to make sure you don't put your law license on the line because you are supposed to lose that law license if you're spouting things that are completely not true, which are complete blatant lies. And maybe that doesn't apply if you want to lie to the media. Maybe it's 100,000% legal to lie to the media. Well, if that's the case, fine. Lie to the media. We'll set the record straight. Don't worry about it. Marty Rathbone, who the church has called a heretic and a liar, says officials are so worried because they know Cook's criticism could be damaging. This is one very important milestone right here. It's like a, a big breach in the dike. But You guys, there's no important milestone. The milestone that, you know, Marty Rathbone is pitching here is his collusion with Debbie Cook to launder her image and to purport that, yeah, something's really going on because, you know, we're really finally calling out the fundraising. The fundraising where, mind you, the fundraising they're talking about, you guys, is things that wouldn't have exposed children to more abuse. So let's just put that fully into perspective so you guys really start understanding who these people are not what they tell you they are, who they actually are, in fact, in their own words. Marty Rathbun and Debbie Cook really pissed that money is being donated for nothing in exchange of no services. No minor was going to have to deal with somebody that paid $5 million to just go into the air so that they could go get a trophy at the graduation that Debbie Cook used to run every Friday night. So... These people are obsessed with their own narcissistic delusions of grandeur who their little granddaddy figure, L. Ron Hubbard, the unindicted felon, they all want to pitch as this incredible man who can create miracles. Well, I guess it depends on the type of miracles that you are looking to create because he did create the miracle of literally 
bringing back child slavery into the U.S. and legalizing it by just paying an attorney to lie. Let's put that into full perspective. But it's not the only one. In a flurry of statements to ABC News, the church defended its construction of numerous church buildings around the world as a way to spread the faith, comparing it to the Catholic Church and its construction of cathedrals in the Middle Ages. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, just when you think you couldn't be more shocked or you couldn't be more revolted by this man, Dan Harris, who just sits there spouting their talking point and pushing not a shred of an inch back. This attorney, you guys, literally just wrote to this segment that they're just like the churches in the Middle Ages. Well, no, shh, right? What was the Catholic Church doing? I don't know, the, the Spanish Inquisition? Interrogating people, right? And they would literally like pull out their nails. They would literally torture people in disgusting chambers of torture and abuse in the Middle Ages. But even then, now, the Catholic Church had to be checked. Yeah, hundreds of years of evolution have curtailed their ability to do whatever the hell it is that they were doing in the Middle Ages. So for Dan to literally be a journalist that's supposed to know history. I mean, isn't this how it works? I didn't go to school, Dan Harris. I went to seventh grade. And even I know the Middle Ages had the Spanish Inquisition. Maybe that's because I went to school in Mexico. Shout out to Mexico for teaching me that. Because it's coming in handy right now when I'm thinking about what in the hell are you talking about the Middle Ages and the churches and it's just like them and we're just like them. So we have a lot of questions and we're getting zero answers. So shout out to all of you Disney executives. Shout out to your legal departments there. Shout out to your ABC legal department. Shout out to Dan Harris and everyone else working on these segments, profiting from kids being abused. That's on y'all. So, America, wake the F up. You're being lied to. You're being gaslit by corporations that are more interested in profiting from the pain inflicted on minors at scale while also purporting to be a kid-friendly corporation. We would love to hear from you, Disney Department to really start getting your facts straight and to really start analyzing what in the hell is going on in your ridiculous corporation, ABC News. What kind of news are you providing? What kind of facts are you checking? What kind of advocacy are you responsible for? Put your money where your mouth is is and stop lying on kids that didn't deserve to be abused and stop laundering the image of every last executive that you're obsessed with getting statements because you don't care if they give you false statements. You don't care if you get gaslit. You don't care if they play you. Apparently, you could not care any less. And you know why you don't care? Because you don't care about what they're actually doing in those hotels. You just care to, you know, Bring up all manner of clickbait so that you can make money from your advertisers. Well, those advertisers should also start really thinking about advertising with you. The ones who don't care if kids suffer. <laughs>